Hi everyone and welcome to the third and last part of MemoQ where you're going to learn how to set up and run a CEDU translation in all of your files from your project. So let's dive in. All right, so what we're going to do is to work on the same project that we created in part one and that we updated in part two. This is going to be the project, my project, so we can double click on the project as such. And now what we can do is to go to MemoQ, then Resources and Resource Console. Here, you're going to learn how to create and set up your settings for pseudo translation. And it's important to note that the pseudo translation, in case you don't know, it's actually a way of processing the source file with your parsers and then running some kind of process as if it was a real translation, but with some dummy characters. This way, when you export the pseudo translated file back, you're going to be able to compare the source file and the exported or pseudo translated file and check that everything has been correctly processed. So what we're going to do is here under MemoQ and then resources, resource console, the pseudo translation can be created and set up under the MT settings. So it's going to be treated as some kind of machine translation settings. Now, what we are going to do is to create a new one because you will see here that the list is empty. So we can click on create new and we're going to give it a name to this empty settings resource. So we're going to call it pseudo translation. We're going to leave the description empty as usual and we can click on OK. This is just an empty settings resource. OK, and for now it's empty but the pseudo translation resource can be edited. So we can right click and go to edit. And here we have some machine translation settings. What we are going to do, and as you can see, all of them are actually real machine translation servers or engines. But if we scroll down a little bit, we're going to see the MemoQ pseudo translation plugin. We can enable this plugin and then click on configure plugin. You will always get some notification like this for the first time. And this is basically that the pseudo translation engine or settings that we're going to create here is going to send the content to the cloud and then it's going to process that content in the cloud and it's going to put it back into your computer. That's the reason why it sends or it gives you a notification about the GDPR uh, stuff, all right? So in case of you have sensitive content, you should be aware of all of these things. So you can click on OK and do not show this warning again. And here you're going to see the pseudo translation settings. You will get a default configuration and this is how MemoQ will process the pseudo translation by default. Okay, And we can see down here that we have the replacement rules and the expand and shrink rules. However, what we are going to do is to create a new a kind of setting because we're not going to use the configuration settings. By default, what it's doing is to add the character like the hash symbol at the beginning, the dollar symbol at the end, as we can see in here. And then what it's going to do for the replacements is that for any letter, no matter if it's uppercase or lowercase, it's going to transform it into a kind of extended character letter. And here we have the sample text and the pseudo translated text. However, what I like to do with the pseudo translation is to not add anything at the beginning or at the end. And instead of replacing these characters with some extended characters, I prefer to use a dollar symbol for all of the characters. This way, when we export the pseudo translated file, it's very easy to know if we have a large file that the content has been included really for translation. All right, so what we can do is to create a new setting. So we can click here in new. So we can say and pseudo translation, for example. Now you can even compare it with the default one in order to check how your settings are. But basically for the source script, we're going to see Latin. And for the target script, we're going to see Latin again. Now we need to have some assigned language pairs in order to be able to use these empty settings for the pseudo translation later on in the project. So what we can do is to click on add and I'm going to specify English United States and then Spanish 
from Spain. So span is from Spain down here. This is basically because my project is set up for these languages as the source and the target languages. Otherwise, it's not going to work correctly. So we can click on select and you could even add some more uh, language pairs. Now down here, again, we're going to see these sample text and this self-translated text. But for now, let's just click on save. Okay, and at least we have saved these self translation settings. What we can do is to go back to the default, copy the replace these characters, go to end self translation, and we're going to enable this option and paste this here. You will notice that we have an error here saying characters zero to few, but what we're going to do is to replace all of these with the same numbers of dollar symbols. So 52 dollar symbols because each character, so the uppercase letter A is going to be replaced with the dollar symbol. The uppercase letter B is going to be replaced by this character, which again is a dollar symbol. And the same happens for all of the characters. This way, again, if you look at this text, you will know easily that everything has been imported correctly. Now, what we're going to do is to disable the add to start or add to the end text. So we don't want to add anything at the beginning or at the end. And for this tab, we can even expand or shrink the pseudo translation. You can expand the pseudo translation and that's important sometimes when you work, for example, from English into German, you would like to check how the longer text actually fits for your file. If it's a DDB file, for example, but, but in this case, we have some XML and TXT files. So we don't actually want to check that extension. What we can do then is to disable the expansion rates and we're going to keep the same length or more or less the same length as the source. And I say more or less because here we have the segments of any length and we could even shrink it or expand it depending on the percentage that we want to use. If we use 100 percentage, that means that the source the text is going to be the same length as the pseudo translation text. But here, as you can see, and this is one bad thing about the settings for the pseudo translation, is that we don't have any field where to enter the 100. Okay, we can only just move this bar and it's impossible to say just 100. So it's either 92 or 102. However, we're going to keep it as 92. And even though you can see here that each letter has been transformed into a character, at the very end, for example, we have the letter pain and we only have three words. Okay, That's because the change length is depending on the number of segments. However, if we move it to words, then very easily we would have the same number of dollar symbols as we have for the letters, because we would need to have 100 character words in order to see the difference. Okay, if we have 92% for words, then again, we would need to have a 92 letter word in order to see that difference. So we don't actually need the 100%. And the last thing is that in case of any expansion, we could even add this part, but there is no expansion because there is even a string of 92. So that's okay. If we go back to replacement rules, we're going to see that this is all set up. We can save these settings and you can even compare it with the default. Okay. By default, again, we have added some letters at the beginning or at the end, some characters, but for the end pseudo translation, we're not going to do so. Okay. So that should be all. Now, what we're going to do is to close it and now click on OK. So we have modified the settings for this pseudo translation resource. We can click on close and now go to translations. And what we're going to do is to apply this MT or pseudo translation to both files. We can select both files, right click, and then use the tasks and then pre-translate. For this pre-translation, we're going to use a machine translation engine, which again, is going to be not a real machine translation, but this is a translation. So we, we can go down here and configure MT services. We select this and we need to enable the pseudo translation resource that we just created. We enable this resource. We go back to translations, do the same tasks, pre-translate. And now we have this part in here. 
Now it's going to be translated into Spanish because that's the target language. And just in case you can even select MT just to make sure that your plugin is selected. And as you can see for the first time that you do this, it's not selected. Once you have selected the corresponding MemoQ CD translation plugin and click on OK, it's going to be active at any point later in the project. OK, so this is a one off setting that you need to do. So if you click on OK, we're going to actually run an MT or a pseudo translation in this case for both files. So for example, let's actually check the parsing.xml, which is the one that we created in part one. And as we can see, the placeholders are kept in the target and we are adding, instead of having the normal letters, we are adding the dollar symbols for the pseudo translation. The same can be checked for the parsing.txt. So if we open this file, we will see that the content is now pseudo translated while keeping the tags that we have protected already. Now, what we are going to see is, okay, we have seen how to set up and run the pseudo translation, but we're going to export these pseudo translated files into our local machine. So what we can do is to click on select both files, go to export and then export choose path. Here we have file name one out of two, but we can export all selected files here in order not to do the same, like not to do the same thing uh, twice. Okay, and even if you have a project with a hundred files, you're not going to be clicking one by one. We can specify the folder here for the output. And what we can do is to say, for example, create a new folder, which is the pseudo. We specify it here. And now all of the pseudo translated files are going to be stored here. You could even append a language code, for example, the ESP language code that it adds to the very end of the file, but we're not going to do so. Okay, so we are going to keep the same file name as the source and we can export the files. Okay, you, you're going to get a report here, export it successfully and export it successfully under this folder. So we can close. And now if we go back to MemoQ, what we can do is actually to check. Okay, so these are the source files and these are the set of translations. What we can do, and actually let's check this with Notepad++, we're going to open first the two source files. Okay, these are the two source files, and we're going to also open the target files. Even though the file names are the same, you're going to very easily see what has been included and what has been excluded for translation. For example, this part and this part. The first tab shows the source file for txt. This is the source file and this is the pseudo translated txt. As we can see all of this part is kept as per the source. All right. And the comments at the very end have also been kept as per the source. But the only thing that is changed is the strings for translation. Okay. Even the placeholder has been kept and the same for the tag. Only the strings for translation has been modified. And lastly, for the XML, we have the source XML and the target XML or the pseudo translated XML. You will notice the difference by toggling between the two of them. But the good thing is that if when you check the pseudo translation, if you see something that has not been pseudo translated, that means that the project is not incorporating that for translation. For example, this placeholder is not included for translation because we don't need to include it for translation. We don't need to translate it. And the same happens for this meta element content. Okay, that's ignored or excluded from translation as we did in part one. Now, the good thing with the pseudo translation again is that, for example, if you see this sentence in English, as we can see it here in the source, then that would mean that we are not including everything for translation as we should. And the same happens for the placeholders. For example, if the placeholder was pseudo translated, then we would have needed to double check the settings in order to correctly protect the embedded content. Okay, that's all for this part. And with this video, we finish the MemoQ chapter for this CAD tool video series. I hope you have enjoyed and learned some interesting stuff about processing XML files, protecting your embedded content using the regex tagger, using the advanced text filter, and setting up and running a pseudo translation on your files. If you are interested in going deeper into technical things, 
you can check the localization engineer course using the link below. In this course, you will get a much deeper explanation of regular expressions and you will learn how to process a website, software, e-learning or app localization project, among other things. You will be able to access the free preview and see if that's for you. Thank you again for watching these videos and I hope to see you soon.